Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the captain with an update on our progress. EasyJet is now Britain's biggest airline. Hold on to your hats. Carrying 90 million passengers last year. Nice face. Bumpy face. But in 2019... This is going to be challenging, I think. Times have never been tougher for airlines. Fly BMI blames rising fuel costs for its collapse. Staying top dog in these turbulent times... You know, better wet pants than a broken neck. ...means flying more passengers... Please don't get drunk on board an aircraft again. ...on more flights. There's various things we can't predict. Retard, retard. I just broke the wiper. ...to new destinations. Wow. Look at that. Doesn't get much better than this. And that means hiring a new crop of young pilots. We'll just wait for these two ducks. OK, that's clear. We're clear for takeoff. Who could be flying you to 30,000 feet... Minimum. ...sooner than you think. Retard. Over a crucial six months. Relax, 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 relax. Our cameras have been given unique access inside the cockpit. Are you from around here? Bakewell. Where the tarps, Where the tarps, tarps come, from? come from? Do they actually? Are you talking to one? <laughs> Following all the highs. God, I can never be tougher. And lows. I need first aid. So buckle up, fold your trays away. <laughs> Retard and prepare for what could be a bumpy ride. That was not my finest. Airports across Britain are preparing for another busy day. Nearly 50,000 sleep-deprived EasyJet customers are checking into flights for what's known in the aviation industry as the first wave. Every 24 hours, EasyJet operates 1,800 flights to one of 158 destinations. And keeping the millions of passengers moving and on time is one very big challenge. We have a very, very tight schedule. We're hoping that everything's operated within slot and on time. Any delay in the first wave could have a huge knock-on effect across the entire day's schedule. And, of course, dent the company's profits. Hi, guys. How are you all? You all right? In Scotland... How are you? Good, thank you. Captain Emma Henderson is in charge of the first flight out of Inverness. This is an important airport for early bird commuters. After you, go on. There's always something. <laughs> It might be the similar aircraft and similar destinations, but there's always something going on that we have to think about. Right, guys, um, fairly straightforward today, down to Gatwick and then out to Amsterdam and back. Are you all working the same sessions? Yeah, we're going to go in there and get on okay, with that now. Hello there, good morning. Captain Emma has a packed two days ahead of her. Six flights? Carrying over 900 passengers. First stop, Gatwick. Morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Today, her rookie first officer is Rachel Sylvester Murphy. Are you ready to see the cockpit Christmas tree? Who stacked shelves to save up the 120 grand needed for pilot school. See what those lights, Brett. Ten minutes till takeoff. Secondary done. OK, so... Just the pre-flight checks left to do. Why well, have we got a flight control slats locked, wingtip brake on, and a slat system one fault? That doesn't sound great. Time to call up the control centre to ask for help. We've got a little interesting one for you here. So on power up, I've got um, an amber slats locked and a um, ECAM warning flight control slats locked, wingtip brake on. Any ideas? Sometimes things happen. We're operating really technical electrical aircraft. Sometimes they're going to go wrong. OK, so is it, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I think with something like flight controls and wingtip brakes, I think I'd rather that signed off by an engineer. So I will um, start to think about um, handling delays and things. <laughs> Emma now needs to face the music. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very warm up on board. This is Jet Flight to Gatwick. Well, the passengers at least. 
So uh, everything was going swimmingly this morning, but uh, as often happens when you think it's going to be a nice easy day out, we have got a small technical defect. If you're sitting on an aircraft and you're expecting to leave at a certain time, and an hour later you're still sitting on the aircraft and you haven't moved and nobody's told you anything, that's going to wind most people up. I needed to um, get an engineer to come and um, reset it for me. Sorry for waking you. No, of course, <laughs> it's my job. 30 minutes later, the engineer starts to work his magic on the plane. Everybody doing all right there? Hi there, sorry for the inconvenience. We'll do our best to get it sorted as soon as we can. I'll try and explain it to my CEO. I'm, I'm meeting with them when I'm this morning. Don't worry, I'll just phone your CEO. <laughs> what time is your meeting? Um, You'll be there for 12 o'clock, don't worry. We've got to go to Amsterdam back before then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, about 45 minutes later. Yeah. We'll make it up, I'm sure she will. Put the afterburners on. <laughs> Turns out software errors also happen in planes. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the lovely man that's just fixed our aircraft, so please feel free to give him a nice round of applause for getting up so early out of his bed this morning. Thank you. They're finally clear for takeoff and heading for Gatwick. When you turn the aircraft onto the runway and set the thrust levers and you're rolling down the runway ready to take off, it is quite awe inspiring, really. Positive flight, gear up. It's thrilling knowing that it's all on you. It's just a thrilling feeling. That's lovely over there, isn't it? Beautiful, yeah. With the sky in the morning, though. Shepherd's warning. Yeah. For your sake, let's hope not. Ladies and gentlemen, hello again to you from the flight deck. We're cruising at 39,000 feet, making our way down the west side of the country. Apologise for the inconvenience once again of the delay earlier on. It makes it so much easier, and we have such lovely passengers who are um, able to accommodate us, so thank you very much for that. Don't even start. <laughs> Despite the hour's delay, a quick turnaround at Gatwick could get them back on track for the rest of today's flights. Gatwick, EZ63, Papazulu, load hold information, hotel, AZ90. EZ63, Papazulu, Gatwick, good morning. Delay is going to be about 10 to 15 minutes. OK, thank you, EZ63, Papazulu. 10 to 15 minutes? Yeah. Well, that's a shame, because that's going to make it tight for those people catching trains and things. Yeah. Senior First Officer Iris de Can is also making her approach to Gatwick, on the way to meet her captain for the day. I have seen his name on my schedule, and for the rest, I have no idea who my captain is. With over 4,000 pilots on the books, it's not unusual for the crew to meet for the first time at the airport. I think pilots are a, are a special breed. Um, that's why I'm not dating a pilot, I think. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I tried in the past. Today, Iris's match made in the heavens is Captain Gaurav Adwani. Hello. Hi, I'm Iris. Hi, nice Iris. To Gaurav, nice to meet you. A long day today. A very long day. Yeah. Iris and Gaurav will be the first pilots to fly a brand new EasyJet route. A Kaba? Mm. Is that how you would pronounce it? Yes, <laughs> a Kaba. That's right, Iris. It's Aqaba in Jordan, five and a half hours flying time away. Good morning, it's the EasyJet crew on the Juliet Foxtrot to Aqaba. Although a new lure for tourists, Hi. the volatile Middle East still comes with risk. Um, one other thing I think to mention is when we go in there, there's some landmines sort of being cleared up quite close to the airport. Landmines. <laughs> So you might see some sand maybe coming up on the final stage of the approach, right, but yeah, yeah. it's very normal. <laughs> normal day, so yeah, it's normal. It's, and then you breathe landmines uh, exploding. <laughs> but before they face the landmines, they need to face something far scarier. The publicity snaps for this inaugural flight. We're going to be hugging, is that OK? Oh, oh I turn into him. <laughs> oh, it's uh, very friendly. <laughs> We need 
go. Thanks. Let's go, girls. Aqaba is one of 150 new routes EasyJet has opened up over the last year. Hi, welcome on board. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And it's the first time both Iris and Gaurav have ever flown this far. You ready? Okay, take off. Check. I don't know if you, if you ever look at an aircraft and then just think how crazy is it that that actually stays in the air and that that's what makes it quite exciting that you think like oh you do have like quite a big bus under your bum. <laughs> a bus with big wings, that's an aeroplane. We didn't know it was a brand new route for EasyJet, it just adds to the excitement, doesn't it? I think the thing is though about Jordan, you say to people like what's Jordan and they say oh, it's Katie Price. <laughs> Do you know, like, what they use that, those pictures for that they took? Maybe the newspaper. We had to get really cosy, didn't we, which was quite weird. Yeah, it was really <laughs> awkward. He's like, a bit more, a bit more, yeah. you... Are you uh, yeah. I tried not to look at you, like, directly. <laughs> I was letting you get close to me rather oh, than me yeah. getting close to you. Very smart, very smart. <laughs> ah, the Instagram generation. Back on the ground in Gatwick, EasyJet's busiest hub, passengers are gearing up for some winter fun in the snowy sun. Winter's big business for the airline industry, with 50 million Europeans heading for the ski slopes every year. Today, 162 passengers are travelling to Innsbruck in the Austrian Alps. And it's down to Captain Bridge Kotecha to get them there safely. This is how you make me look cool. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> After you know, 11,000 hours of flying, more than a year of my life up in the air, um, I still get just as excited. Surrounded by 8,000 feet high mountains and whipped by gale force winds, Innsbruck Airport is rated Category C. There are only a handful of airports with this rating marking them out as the hardest places to land in the world. For me, Innsbruck's the ultimate to land into. From a professional point of view, it's challenging. From a personal point of view, it's really good fun. Not frightening, because we're prepared and we're trained for it. But from the passenger's point of view, sometimes I, I can actually hear them screaming in the back. <laughs> out of 4,000 pilots, only 140 EasyJet captains are qualified to land at Innsbruck. The weather conditions, there's quite a lot of snow blowing, good for, uh, good for the customers, but uh, obviously makes things a little bit more challenging for us. In terms of threat and error management today, um, a go-around could happen. A go-around is pilot speak for an aborted landing. Supporting bridge is 25-year-old First Officer Nathan Green. Hundred and thirty five, hundred and forty mile an hour wind and it's um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Have I just yeah, tempted so fate? Yeah. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> As they fly closer to the Alps, Bridge and Nathan must focus on the challenges ahead. What are the biggest threats today? What do you reckon? To right is there is snow on the runway, that the priority is, is, is getting those tires gripping yeah. well and stopping the aer aeroplane as quickly as possible. Right, should the unthinkable happen, where would you like to go? Uh, let's have a look. We've got Brussels behind us. Uh, Luxembourg's got a nice long runway, isn't it? 4,000, yeah. That's a nice place uh, to go. A big Cologne or Frankfurt? Cologne? That's, a, yeah. that's an easy jet route, isn't it? So I, I have diverted into there with uh, a medical problem once. They were absolutely superb. Diverting to Cologne would mean EasyJet laying on a seven-hour coach ride to Innsbruck for the passengers. But Bridge isn't going to let them in on any of his concerns just yet. Captain, with an update, we're at 35,000 feet, making uh, steady progress. Weather uh, conditions, we've got a, a few snow showers in the vicinity. Uh, temperature on the ground is uh, minus one degree Celsius. 
lots of clouds, so I'm afraid you're not going to see uh, too much as we uh, start our uh, descent. Last yeah. on the flight deck, a very good afternoon. It's a safe onward journey. Thank you all very much for choosing this jet. More often than not, you will not see what you want to until the decision point. You can't get it wrong. It's down to bridge to decide whether it's safe to land. What's wind again? Or not. 200 to 280. But with low visibility. Nothing on my radar. He can't even make out Innsbruck. Your adrenaline is going. Let alone the runway. What do I do if something goes wrong? Minimum. Absolutely nothing. Just 10 minutes out from Innsbruck in Austria, Captain Bridge and First Officer Nathan are making their descent through thick clouds. Nothing nasty on my radar. Check. The airport is classified as Category C, which means it's one of the most challenging places to land in the world. Flying in and out of Innsbruck does have a higher level of um, risk. I'll be relying on, on the First Officer to, to help identify things that might be out of my peripheral vision. What's wind again? 200 to 280 degrees, seven knots. Bridge needs the cloud to clear enough so that he can spot three vital landmarks in the final seconds. Without the cloud blanket, you can't miss them. First, a group of flats on the east side. Then, a set of strobe lights called the rabbits, which guide them towards the runway. And finally, Bridge needs to see the runway itself before he hits. Minimum. Aeronautical speak for decision time. Flat three, speed checked, flaps three. Next check's at 17 miles. Flying blind at 150 miles per hour, Bridge has to rely on his instruments, training, and instinct to navigate the 8,000 foot high mountains and hefty tailwinds. Absolutely nothing. Yes, check. In your head, I'm thinking I'm ready to go around now. I'm going to not be able to make this approach. 2,500. Now, only 2,000 feet above ground, Bridge has to decide whether it's safe to land or better to abort. More often than not, in the worst parts of winter, um, you will not see what you want to. Um, until the decision point. Um, and at that point, for me, um, yeah, your, your adrenaline is going. In less than a minute, there'll be no going back. Four seconds. Oh, the flats coming in. Dead. Gear down, please. Gear. With seconds to spare, the first landmark, the block of flats. Coming in nicely from the rabbits. Well. Right. And then the strobes they call the rabbits. But that runway is still nowhere to be seen. If he doesn't see the runway in the next 10 seconds, he will have to abort. Minimum. Continue. Check. With not a second to spare, Three whites, correcting. The runway appears. But you're clear to land. Those last few seconds are always um, intense. 40, 30, 20, retard, retard. All Bridge needs to do now is stop 66 tons of plane before the icy runway runs out. Somebody jogging out over there. Of course. <laughs> cool, thank you very much for your help there. Excellent. As one might say in aviation speak, nailed it. Eight fifty. Gosh, we're nearly an hour late now. 
After a bad start to the day, Captain Emma and First Officer Rachel are already an hour behind schedule on the next leg. Hi, take off. Check. Flying Gatwick to Amsterdam. Rachel, you choose first today, because I nicked the toaster yesterday. It's likely the passengers will be arriving late. We're going to do our best to get you to Amsterdam. I'm sure you can appreciate on a short flight like this, there's very little time we can make up. But not all of them seem that bothered. We don't worry about today, it's just means more drinking time. Thanks to starting the party long before boarding. It's about 10 o'clock. This is the what, fifth one. I've been drinking since about half four this morning. <laughs> the wild one. Fifty-six minutes late. Really? Yeah. Hello, I'm going to call it 155. Call sign, Eddie. You can make golf box. Bye. Love you. Captain, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Please prepare the landing. Minimum. Impressively, Emma's managed to shave 15 minutes off the delay. Very good. A quick turnaround could make all the difference. Hello, San so Gate Hotel 5. It's still occupied. OK, we'll pick up Taxi Bravo to um, wait for Hotel 5 to become free. But now another plane has nipped in ahead of them and stolen their parking space. I wonder how long our stand's going to be occupied for. I bet there's some really cross people now. What passengers? Well, can't be helped, can it? With the passengers stuck on the tarmac... It's all been a bit of a, a complicated routing in today. The sights and sounds of Amsterdam will have to wait. Uh, DC-75 Alpha Lima. DC-75 Alpha Lima, go ahead. Yeah, would you be so kind to continue taxi first right and then left to hold short uh, of Alpha 1i? Because you are so nicely, we'll do that for you, no problem at all. Easy, 75 Alpha Lima. All Emma needs to do is find her way to a new parking space. Um, yeah, Echo 5, right, second left, left on Alpha. Left. No, not this Alpha one. Alpha 1, 6 approved. Yeah, so we'll go... Um, not, this right here. Right. not this right here, no, next right. Nice so we'll end on our left. Two, three, zero. Yeah. yeah. No, he's not out there at the taxi. Right? Thank you, Mr. Right Turn, easy. Uh... Uh, sorry, I thought you told us to go um, straight ahead and then right at Alpha 18 and then back on ourselves. No, no, it was the other way around. Sorry, we completely misunderstood. Easy 75 Alpha Lima, we'll just hold here then. We will sort it out anyway. We'll get there eventually. Perhaps we'll start listening to you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so much for making up time. And what's worse, they're now pointing in completely the wrong direction. I thought it was first right. Yeah, but where did he want us to go? First right, come in here, go along there, backtrack oh, out see. here and be back I here see. and okay. that way. Uh, DC 7, 5 Alpha Lima, if you can take first right and then circle the L uh, anti-clockwise. That's clockwise, but anyway. Not, he said anti-clockwise, but we're going right, right, that's clockwise. Yeah. Oh, well. For him, it's anti-clockwise, because he's sitting there. I oh, know, it's still clockwise, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I am right, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. So, to confirm, it's 75 Alpha Lima, turn right here and then back on ourselves, yeah? Yeah, right here and then left. Left to be sure, heading east again to circle that hour over there. Oh. Oh, OK. So, we'll go uh, right here, then left, as you said, easy. 75 Alpha Lima, thanks for that. <laughs> They're going to think, what is going on here? Ah, they must hate us. That's hilarious. <laughs> back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords and shot each other. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, it's the captain speaking again. We're nearly there. They're really teasing us this morning. So, um, and I promise you that just because we've got two girls in the flight deck, that's not why we've been all the way round and round the, the, the garden. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. So, 43 minutes in the air and 30 minutes trying to park. Goodness me. Rah. 
Ankara, good morning, easy. 8731 flight of a 370 Belgi. Well done. You'll make an excellent commander. Oh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> 10,000 feet above the Alps, First Officer Iris de Can and Captain Gura Vadwani are at the controls of EasyJet's first ever flight to Aqaba in Jordan. Do you have a flight? Yes, why do you want to? Why? I know it's yours, but... The long flight gives the passengers plenty of time to kick back and relax. My problem is his legroom, so I'm six or eight, which doesn't help. But um, actually, for once, I've got pretty good legroom here, and they keep coming down with wine, so it's pretty good. What does your uh, partner do? He's a, he works from home. He's in property. Oh, OK. So how did you guys meet? Tinder. <laughs> really? I just thought I want to go on one Tinder date, because I thought Tinder was for, you know, like yeah. other things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I thought I'm going to go on one Tinder date, um, and that was him. <laughs> uh, I think you know. Don't you think you know? I know that there's an instant attraction and love there straight away. And the other hand, it's also really weird to pick up strangers in bars, right? That's how I met my wife. You see? Super <laughs> weird. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you meet. All relationships can hit some turbulent times. <gasps> my goodness. Do you think the seatbelt sign are still on? Yeah, I think we'll leave it on until we get through all of yeah. this. Yeah. So unstable. Yeah. They are now well over halfway through their five and a half hour flight. I can give them a bit of a PA as well just to keep them in the loop. Let's first have a macaroon. Priorities. Yeah. the bit I was most interested in. More of a crosswind, isn't it? It's the second busy day on the run for Captain Emma Henderson. And after yesterday's nightmares, she's hoping for a smooth start for the 7.40 from Gatwick to Pisa. Flight times, you've got um, 1 hour 50, 1 hour 50, 1 hour 30. Uh, it's going to be, oh gosh, a massive shear rate. Where's that 15.4? I don't think I've ever seen one that high. It's really basically high. really, really turbulent. So oh, okay. If it gets really bumpy suddenly, I might do a cabin crew, take your seats immediately, so just okay. sit down wherever you can. And you might find that passengers are quite scared by that, so we'll just deal with it as best we can. Hi, Dave, good morning. Hi, good morning, welcome. Hi, good morning. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I've only got the 5th of December database in here. Is yours up to date? No, I've only got that as well. Once on board with her 22-year-old first officer, Josh Demaid, there's yet another problem to deal with. Our database, our nav database, hasn't been updated. The maps on the onboard computer are out of date. We have got the old one and we can't use it because it obviously could be inaccurate. OK, thanks very much. Cheers then. Bye. They're going to have to get someone out to do it. Um, okay. Excellent. For the second time in 24 hours, Emma's starting the day with a delay. I'm sorry to tell you, we're going to have to wait for an engineer to come and visit the aircraft this morning. If I could just ask for your patience um, with that. But veteran Emma has a trick up her sleeve to distract the passengers. Perhaps come and visit us in the flight deck if you would like to. Josh, nice to meet you. Hello. Do you want me to take a picture? Is that OK, please? Oh, is the engineer here? Hello, how are you doing? Hello. In the meantime, I'm going to try and keep the passengers as happy as I can. There you go for Girls Weekend away. Yeah, yeah. 
Like, should I warn Peasy you're coming? Yeah. Should I? <laughs> At last, they can now work out where they're going. Ladies and gentlemen, I have good news for you. The um, database has now been updated. I'm very sorry for the delay. It's been really lovely to come and speak to some of you. So thank you for being so patient and being such lovely passengers. Oof. And breathe. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Absolutely fine. It's just about typical, isn't it? <laughs> so um, I can't believe that happened. Over an hour behind schedule, Gatwick gives clearance. Take off. Check. And Captain Emma takes off. 400 knots. Check. Into some rather ominous looking skies. EDA 7 Gold Bound for 160 to 90 to 40 MA. Put some very repellent on. Oh. Works really well. Oh, wow, look at that. Newbie Josh has squirted the windscreen with moisture repellent. We've never used it before. Oh. There we go. First time for everything. But before he has a chance to try out the other buttons... Severe turbulence forecast west of the line. An hour into the flight, they hit the turbulence. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain speaking. I have put the seatbelt signs on for now because um, aircraft ahead have reported um, just a turbulence. But it would be safer for you to be sitting down with your seatbelt on. But obviously, please make sure that you are safe at all times. Thank you for your patience. And uh, I will speak to you again later. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, millions of flights are affected by turbulence. Causing a hundred injuries to passengers worldwide, mainly to the head and neck. And it always pays to come prepared for all eventualities. Takes the edge off it. <laughs> Hold on to your glasses. 150 mile an hour winds are now hammering the Airbus. <laughs> to avoid the worst bumps, Emma must increase the thrust so the plane can climb above the turbulence. So we're looking for 81% of the thrust if we need to disconnect it. Yeah. It's not so nice now. Maybe what that I don't like it. <laughs> Then, at last... It's really stable at the moment. There we go. That is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, really lovely. After an hour's delay and having ridden out the turbulence, veteran Captain Emma can finally relax. These are amateurs. <laughs> and focus on briefing young Josh on what not to say to air traffic control. Going into Amsterdam yesterday, we had to do it orally. Orally, and yeah. And then every time I said that, I just, I eventually I smirked. Why? I'll tell you later. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm, probably best you don't. Lovely landing, Josh. Thank you. Lovely landing. Uh oh, what will the message say? <laughs> 1600 miles away and now approaching Jordan, Iris and Gurav have just received an alert from EasyJet Control Center. For your information, a station manager advises that they intend to provide a water cannon salute as you taxi onto stands. Woohoo! I never had one, have you? Oh, no, never. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This salute is a coveted celebration used whenever there is an important airport event. Hello. We're getting a water cannon salute. 
When going on set, it's my first one. It's Finally, first one well, yeah. some acknowledgement. <laughs> you little bit. That's nice. Yes. Yeah. Maybe they can also show glitter. Yeah. To get some. I love some glitter. Flight EZY 8731 is now just 40 minutes from touchdown. But before they land, there's still one really important thing they need to agree upon. Did you guys listen to my PA at all? Yes. Do you think I pronounced Akaba right? Um, Akaba. Yeah, did I say Akaba or did I say Akaba? Yeah, but what is it? Is it Akaba? I'm not sure. Most says it's Akaba. 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 Okay, I'll try and be more. I just want to say it really quickly. Yeah. Akaba, 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 Akaba. Or you can go Akaba if you want it. Akaba. Uh, it's like Okado. You don't say Okado, you say Okado. Yeah, Okado. So it's Akaba. Akaba, dude. Akaba, yeah. Oh, they're never going to get it. It's Akaba. Akaba. Thank you. Cheers. Are you not having another hot drink? I'm not as demanding as you. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I will have another Wait hot till drink, you get but all the caffeine then is going to be... You'll be demanding all sorts. Oh, yes. Our egos grow. How's your ego? <laughs> you have to tell me. I've seen worse. OK. Not quite the answer Gaurav was hoping for. Finally, the plane is back on firm ground and without a landmine in sight. It's a very dry country, isn't it? Yeah, about to get much wetter. Oh, everyone's taking pictures and stuff. Hello. There it is. <laughs> Uh, it's like being in the car wash. <laughs> After a long five and a half hour flight, the passengers are desperate to get off the plane, and the crew are ready for a break. Yay, we're here! We did it. We did it. Well done. But no rest for the wicked. They've just found out there's a welcoming party of local dignitaries waiting to meet them. What's your request for assistance? The welcome has been planned with every attention to detail, except one. Where? Do you have any complaints? Oh, no, no complaint, just, uh, just informing you of what he's doing. I am ready for start-up and be ready for the position. Clearly not here. Ladies and gentlemen, the airport authorities have asked us to move the aircraft from here, so please do take your seats. We will be putting the seatbelt signs back on. Oh, look! They're coming. Oh, look at him run. Watch him run there. Uh, he's like, I'm running, I'm coming. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm too old for this. He probably is. While the passengers can finally enjoy their holiday... See you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Poor old Iris and Gurav still have to engage in a little international diplomacy. I'm the Commissioner for Tourism and Economic Development in Aqaba, in Aziza. Oh, nice to meet you, sir. I think it's quite an honour to do an inaugural flight. You feel quite special, more special than you did at the beginning of the day, I think. There were all these important people who were handed gifts, sea salts. So, um, yeah, I used them. <laughs> I don't think we will have such enthusiastic people waiting for us in Gatwick. Everyone would just want to get off at home. There's just another five and a half hours of flying before Iris and Gurav can finally clock off. And tomorrow's another day, I think. On the other side of the Mediterranean, in Pisa, Captain Emma is also looking forward to getting home. But surprise, surprise, they're already behind schedule. We've tried to make up some time on the way in here, and we will try and make some time on the way back to Gatwick as well. And things are only going to get worse. Captain Emma's been called from the flight deck to deal with an urgent problem.
On the ground in Pisa, northern Italy, Captain Emma Henderson's on the second day of her long shift, which up till now has been plagued by delay after delay after delay. Um, is our flight plan still valid? We need to know. I'll just ask them. That's a good point, actually. Fifteen minutes behind schedule, Emma's keen to get back on track and home on time. I've got a hot tub on my deck in, back in Scotland and I'll be going in that tonight when I get home. I do like to go and sit and wallow in my hot tub at night, so... and I'm not even ashamed to admit that. <laughs> They're flying back to Gatwick before travelling on to Inverness, where Emma's hot tub awaits. It is busy, busy, yeah, absolutely. EasyJet allows 30 minutes to turn flights around. Part of the team, aren't we? Yes, so. we are. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's all righty. Today, they've done it in just seven and have got themselves back on schedule. Yeah, I know. They're actually it's like a stampede, wasn't they? Hilarious. But as the 162 passengers board the plane, <coughs> Captain Emma's been called from the flight deck to deal with an urgent problem. One Italian traveller's claustrophobia has been triggered by the confines of the cabin. It became quite quickly apparent that actually this lady wasn't just nervous. I could just see her eyes roll back in her head and I knew she was going to collapse. So it's a classic case of passenger fainting into captain's arms. But when somebody collapses, I hadn't really appreciated how heavy they are. <laughs> With the poorly passenger now being violently sick, Emma has more than delays on her hands. I felt very sorry for her, actually, because she wasn't very well. <laughs> The passenger is escorted off the plane, but it can't go anywhere until her bags have been unloaded from the hold, which means even more delays for Captain Emma. Right, I'm so sorry. No, why are you apologising? If you weren't there, she could have fallen and hurt herself. Well, yeah. Anyway. Ground connected. Anyway. Ground connected. Ground connected. Oh, okay. Ground connected. OK, we're actually about to request start-up. Are we able to do that? Is he exit on Golf Alpha? Yes, ma'am, but uh, your first plan is uh, expired. OK, I'll call them. Don't worry, easy exit on Golf Alpha, thanks. At the moment, it's not possible. OK, no problem. I'll call the company. Thanks for your help. The flight missed its takeoff slot. <laughs> so Emma now needs to negotiate a new one with air traffic control. Yeah. Hi there, it's Emma Henderson again. They're now almost an hour behind schedule. We're running so late already, and we've had a tech defect, and now a medical on board, and we just want to get up to the nest. Just to let you know that we're going to be ready to go in just about two or three minutes. So thanks for your patience, and just thought I'd explain to you why you're still waiting. Anyway, she's standing there saying no, no, and I thought she was starting to think about it. And um, then she started retching, and I was thinking, oh, God. So I got a scarf off her. She was like, oh, oh. And I reached for a sit bag just in time, oh. held it out for her it and caught it. Out, it did go over as it splattered, all, it? no, but oh. it splattered into my hand inside the sit bag, and I was like, all of her day's work. <laughs> well, it's a good job I've had kids, is all I can oh, say. Dear. So, um, yeah, so poor lady. Fifty, forty, thirty, 
20. Retard. 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 Round spoilers. Reverse green. Detail. Manual brakes. Checked. Over the last two days, Emma has had to battle electrical faults, turbulence, and a vomiting passenger. I'm going to get a reputation, aren't I? <laughs> never, never. I'm with the captain from hell again. <laughs> but she has still managed to get all her passengers safely to their destinations and has earned her hot tub reward. I reckon I'll be in it by about six and probably in bed by about seven tonight. Next time... Just to make you aware, we have one gentleman who's a little bit too much to drink. But please don't get drunk on board an aircraft again. So, flat system one fault. If the other one fails, then it ends up becoming significantly more exciting. They say now the flight is released. Yeah,